Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and I'm back. It's Thursday, that means we're on YouTube. Oh boy, we've had a big week. Uh, we're working away on Snow Bear, and so that's what we're gonna do some more on today. Uh, if you guys have been with me for the, I gotta adjust my camera there. There we go, that looks a little better. Um, if you've been with me over the last couple of weeks, or if you've been with us over the last year or so, you know we've got this project that we're working on. An animated short, hand-drawn 2D animation called Snow Bear and about a little polar bear that lives in the well he's not little he's a big he's a big full-grown polar bear lives in the arctic and he's very lonely and so he can't find any friends so he makes a friend by making a snow bear and uh, so it's a little story about what he does but um so i've been working on a test scene for the last week or so week and a half and um and you know we want to use this shot as kind of a just a test to see how we want the backgrounds to look how we want to color the character, whether or not we want to do shadows, all that kind of thing. And you can see here that I've got a little bit of a mock-up uh, for one of the frames. One of the things that we do not want to do um, on here is to clean up the drawings, making them really chiseled. I want to keep the rough animation drawings. And so I want a background that's kind of going to kind of match that. So one of the things I've been doing is looking at, uh, I'm going to jump over to Photoshop. I've been looking at uh, Winnie the Pooh backgrounds. I'm a big fan of the, the old Winnie the Pooh backgrounds. And um, for the reason of, uh, they have this really nice loose drawing style. Not super loose, but you know, a nice drawing style. Very uh, kind of minimal ink drawing with watercolor washes underneath that kind of hold it all together. And I really respond, I've, I've responded well to that. Nick, my business partner, has responded well. Um, and it's, I think that's a, that's a route we want to pursue. I think we, it's going to match our the animation style. And so jumping over to here, this is one of our test backgrounds. This is kind of what I was shooting for uh, when I, you know, very loose drawing style. I want a, kind of a, a nice big open background. And the other thing too you're going to notice are these big mountains in the background. One of the things we've been looking at, um, you know, one of the things I always stress is research. Do, we do your research. And, uh, um, you know, yes, polar bears live in the Arctic, but, I, we, but we want something a little bit more dramatic for a back, background, background uh, setting. And so we've been looking a lot at Baffin Island. Let me pull up, uh, let me pull up Baffin Island. There we go. There we go. Ba Baffin Island. Baffin Island, uh, if you don't know where Baffin Island is, if you look at Greenland, and just go to the west of Greenland, there's Baffin Island right there. It's basically straight up. If you do a straight line going up the east coast of the United States, up through Canada, you just, you'll end up hitting Baffin Island. Um, and it's super rugged, super beautiful. Here's a shot right here. Um, and it's, it's just the kind of environment that we are looking for. Um, here's a good uh, example of where the location is. So here's the United States down here, and you just draw a line up through Canada into Baffin Island up in there. And um, so it's got all this rugged, dramatic scenery, and that's we really kind of want to have that. We want to be able to have some fun with our staging for the character. So that's, um, that's what we're looking at there. Before I go any further, I'm just going to say uh, real quick, I've got Dustin with me, as always. Say hi, Dustin. Hey, guys. And I've got Nick Birch over in Sarasota, my business partner, and he is going to be typing questions and answering things on his end as well as well. Dustin is uh, asking questions here, and um, and I'm just going to do like I always do. I'm going to be answering questions, and I'm just going to continue drawing. I just want to kind of take you through what we've done so far, and then we're going to continue drawing with the animation test because I've got lots of in betweens to do, and I'll explain what those are in a minute. Um, Nick and a couple of viewers are saying there's a there's a really big echo. Um, it might be because you. Uh, is your YouTube tab open and does it have sound? Oh, you know what? Maybe it does. Hold on one second. Sorry, guys. Let me check. And come on over here, Dustin. Give me a hand. Do I just turn it off? No, I can't turn it off because we're streaming. Uh, I got the. I've got it muted. Yeah, the, the, um, yeah this tab you can. Well, if it's muted, then it should be fine. Yeah. Sorry guys, uh, let's see, I'm not sure what's happening. Um, check the um, uh, stuff real quick. Hello, hello. Yeah, uh, the mic is fine. Sorry. Uh, go ahead, just mute, just mute mine. Okay. And I'll just 
speak louder. Okay. Uh, and I'll just repeat your question. Is that yeah. uh, is that any better, you guys? Hello, hello, testing, testing, hello. It'll take a moment for the stream to pick to pick up. Sounds fine now. Good. Okay, so it was Dustin's mic. I think it was it was uh, picking up the feedback. All right, cool. Well, let's jump back. Sorry, guys. Let's jump back to uh, TV Paint. So this is the software. I'm going to get this question over and over and over and over again. <laughs> uh, this is TV Paint software that I'm animating in today, uh, and I animate in always. Um, uh, it's a great piece of software that I, I just, ever since I started using it, to me, for, for me, coming from a hand-drawn paper background, uh, it was very, it was a very easy transition for me. And so I've really come to love the software. Um, right now, I'm going to turn off this background. You can see, actually, I'll let it, well, I'm going to turn it off for a second and I'll let the animation play. Um, since I last saw you guys, I'm going to come back to the beginning here. Since I last saw you guys, we were just kind of going straight ahead in our animation, and I was trying to figure out this animation of the bear kind of jumping through the snow. Um, since I last saw you, I've finished the animation, I've finished the pose test, and then I've gone back and I'm starting to in between the, the drawings. What that means is I'm, I'm putting all the drawings in between those keys that I drew for you to smooth that action out. And so far, I've got about a third of it, maybe a little over a third of it in between because I was doing some in-betweening over on Facebook two days ago. Now let me jump down to the beginning. So now you can see, if you look at the timeline here, I've got a different drawing for every frame of film. That means I've got 24 drawings for every second because uh, there's 24 frames going through the camera every second. And so now you can see if I scrub through the action is much, much more smooth. And then as he settles in to a, his pose here, I can jump back over to twos, which means it's one drawing for every two frames. So when the action gets slower, I can get away with doing less drawings per second. So it jumps over to twos, and then once he picks up his pace again, you can see I've got a couple of color models in here. Uh, then he goes back to ones again. Yeah, Dustin. They're going to clean up or leave a sketchy like that. That's what I was saying earlier. If you came in a little bit late, I was saying earlier that um, one of the goals is to leave. I want to leave the sketchiness. I don't want to clean it up. Um, I've always wanted to do an animated short that keeps the animator's drawings. And so the whole goal was to come up with a background style that kind of matched the sketchiness of the drawing. And so that's why the background style looks the way it does. And we're actually going to be painting the bear the same way that the background is painted. It'll have kind of this watercolor kind of wash feel to it. But let me go ahead and play this for you real quick. Let me turn off the background first. And you'll get to see kind of the whole test. Last week all you saw was him kind of jumping, but I've got a whole test now and I'll go ahead and play it. So he comes in. This is what I animated for you guys last week. We're going to be in betweening that. And he, oh, it was right here. And then he rolls back. And he plows through the snow. Huh? And that's the test. So um, and now, but you can see in the front half of the test, you can see how much smoother it is now because I've added all the extra drawings that need to be in there. And it's a much smoother action. And that's the goal right now is to push through and get all the rest of the drawings in. We'll probably end up with about 300 to th you know, around 300, 350 drawings uh, when all is done, all is said and done. And uh, and then from there, uh, we'll move on to painting the character. I also want, uh, I've got some effects that I'm going to do with the snow, that sort of thing. So there's a lot that goes into each, you know, each shot. This is a 17 second shot. And you can see that we've been on it already a week. And, um, you know, we've got a lot to do on it. But I want to go ahead now, imagine it with color. I'll give you a little shot of the background, how he sits on that snow plane. And just imagine he will be, uh, he'll have color on him. You'll see that color flash on those two frames um, right there. Uh, as you know, that's where I, I, just, I, I picked two frames to kind of, to paint to see how he sat against that background. And that's kind of how we do it. That's this, this is what we would do it in feature animation as well. We pick a couple of, a couple of frames from each shot and then color them up and make sure we got them to match the background right and all the other shots around that, that scene. 
and then uh, and then we'd paint all the characters and all the all the frames accordingly. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. Go ahead, Dustin. Uh, whenever you animate, do you go by feel if the motion feels natural when bouncing and bounding? Yes. When I'm animating straight ahead, like I did last week, which means I'm just kind of feeling it as I go. I'm really, it's all intuition. I really am just kind of feeling it. And, uh, and it's, it's I'm, I'm trying to figure out the physics. I'm trying to figure out the weight. I've already got a sense of how fast to move something just through experience, how far to move it across the screen in order to get a certain speed. Um, and then I just, I feel that movement. I, I, I've got to I kind of put myself in that bear's head. That's what I do. But I'm going to go ahead. You can see I've already got a few. If you look at the timeline, I've got a few ones in here that I've already in between where he comes out of that. He does an anticipation, then goes to start bounding again. But now I'm going to start adding some more in-betweens. Whoops, I'm on the wrong. Here we go. There we go. There, I'm on the wrong layer. Is it possible to get a 3D or CG animation job with an amazing 2D hand-drawn animation portfolio? Well, I would say, oh, I'm, I got the wrong brush. I would say that, uh, no, you can't, get a, you can't get a 3D job by showing 2D work. But I would, if you have a great 2D portfolio, um, I, would, I would include it in your 3D work just because... What that does is it really shows that you understand, if it's really strong work, it shows that you understand the concepts of, of animation. Um, weight, follow through, overlap, timing, all of that. Um, and so, yeah, I, I would include it, although that wouldn't be the main thrust of, of the portfolio itself. So here I'm just kind of moving him through this pose. Yep. Uh, will there be a moving background in the short? Well, there might be. If we have camera moves, then the background will move. Um, right now, in this in this shot, it's just a locked off camera, so there's no uh, there's got no, there's not going to be a moving background. So right now, I'm thinking about okay. I want to. I'm looking at his knee, knee. I want to bring that knee up. I'm also thinking about arcs. I'm always talking about arcs. Arcs will give you your fluidity. I want things to move in smooth arcs like that. So as this foot's coming up, it's going to be moving in an arc, like so. And the same with the knee. So I want to bring that knee up, and I want to bring this foot up into here. Right about in here. How many drawings do you have so far in this one scene? Well, let's see. Let's see how many drawings I have so far in this one scene. I've got 219 drawings so far in this one scene. That's two, I've still got about another 100 to go, and that will cover 17 seconds. So it's a lot of drawing, but it's worth it. You end up with something that's really, you know, the idea that you, I can just sit down and draw and I can make somebody laugh and cry and root for a character and actually believe that that character is alive and breathing, that's a pretty cool feeling. It's a pretty cool power to have. Let me bring this up just a little bit. There we go. Start to feel that leg come up. And I want to get that belly. I'm coming down, starting to come down. There we go. I'm going to bring that other foot right through here. Right, and keep that arc. I'm going to pull it up just a slight, slight bit. Uh, what kind of computer uh, do you need for animation? Because I have a uh, MacBook Air. Uh, is that good for drawing? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm using. I'm. I'm on a Mac Pro. Um, uh, everything I use is Mac. Uh, as far as I, I'm pretty sure that would work. Um, Nick would probably know a little better than I would, than I do. Uh, what made you decide to have Snow Bear animated in a rough animation? Well, there's a couple of different reasons I wanted to have Snow Bear animated in rough animation. Uh, first of all, I've always wanted to to celebrate the animators' drawings and just kind of let the let that carry the 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 story. And um, 
and also it, it's a time issue. You know, we don't have a lot of time and money to make this. And so one of the main thing is I, I tend to animate fairly clean. And so one of the first things we decided was, well, let's just, uh, let's just keep the rough animation and let that carry the story. And so that's something we decided to do right off the bat. It was more of a kind of a financial time, time decision. And like I said, from an artistic standpoint, I've always wanted to kind of do a full short all in rough animation. Uh, how many programs do you uh, use for your work? Well, there's, uh, I use TV Paint for my animation and <clears throat> for my digital painting, I use Photoshop almost all the time, although uh, sometimes I'll use uh, Painter. I'll use Procreate on my iPad, um, and I think that's pretty much it. Pretty simple. As you can see, we are moving him right through this, this action, trying to get him to turn right through there. So let's move on to the next drawing. What you got, Dustin? Um, what do you think about Anime CC? Have you ever tried it? You know what? Uh, I haven't. And if Photoshop, if you're talking about the animation in Photoshop, it's not quite, it's not good for what this is, for what I'm doing here. It's not built for that. Um, and I'm a big proponent of get the, to the right tools for the job. And Photoshop is a great tool. I mean, I, I use it all the time. But it's not a tool for, for doing hand-drawn 2D animation. Some people can do it, but it's very clunky and it's very difficult. And you can't, you can't edit a whole movie on it like what we're going to be doing. Even though it's a short movie, you still can't. It's just a pain in the butt. Um, so... Uh, uh, Anime CC is Flash. Not Flash. Oh, Flash. Sorry. Well, it's still... I, no, I haven't used Flash at all. And, um, and uh, still, it's... Uh, um, one of my buddies, Ronnie Williford, has used Flash, and I think he—I I know he's done quite a few stuff, quite a few things with it. And um, if you look up Ronnie, um, he's actually got a, a color course on our website, uh, CreatureArtTeacher.com. He's an amazing painter, but he's also a great animator. We animated together at Disney, and um, and I know he was doing some stuff uh, while he was working in Texas on Flash. And Nick, correct us on that. He also says that it's uh, vector based. Yeah, and vector. I don't like working vector. I, I, the, the drawing feels weird to me. I like bitmap like this. Um, and I know, you know, I, I just if I if, if we're gonna blow it up really big, I just make sure I do it at a really good resolution. Uh, do you have a favorite animator from the Nine Old Men? Yeah, Milt Call was one of, one of my favorites. Uh, Frank and Ollie were definitely two other of my favorites. Milt Call I really loved because he um, he was just an amazing draftsman and uh, and he drew animators really well. Mark Davis was an amazing uh, animal artist as well. Uh, actually, they all were. <laughs> you know, if you look at Frank and Ollie's animation from Bambi, it was just it's in, it's stunning. So. It's hard to say who is my favorite because they all have these these different talents. Although you know, I, I there's something I, you know, I've I've got a certain soft spot for Milt Call, even though he was a tough guy to get along with. Um, I, I matter of fact, I got to show you something. I'll be right back. One of my prized possessions. I don't know if you can see this or not, but this is, um, this is, uh, can you see? Yeah, this is from Sleeping Beauty, uh, and this is an original Milk Call rough drawing that I've got, and I keep it right up over my desk, my animation desk when I'm working, and that's always my, my inspiration, but that's, that's an old Milk Call drawing right there, pretty cool, from the 1950s. That was uh, that was a gift from my friend Alex Cooper Schmidt and uh, Mike Stoltz, and it was just it was really 
Really nice of them. Uh, how would you do a, a clean line art for these drawings where there's so much fur and close uh, shapes uh, just won't uh, work well? Well, I mean, to, to do the... Uh, it's just like anything else. You just got to find... when, Especially when you have fur... Um, even when you're doing cleanup, you don't really worry about making sure every single piece of clump of fur tracks. Um, it, it's okay just to let it vibrate a little bit. Um, you know, this, this here is actually fairly clean. Um, I would just make sure that, you know, the line was a little bit more chiseled and that, you know, areas were clean, uh, closed off a little better. But if I turn that off there, um, Get that tail in there. Actually, that tail should stick out a little more. There we go. So you can see, even without onion skin, you can. Now it's a good practice to try doing this without the onion skin. You can see here, I forgot. Forgot the uh, the other arm in there. There we go. What you got, Dustin? I know there's more questions. Uh, do you know any animation schools in Spain? I don't know any animation schools in Spain. I'm actually, I'm not familiar with any animation schools in Spain. Uh, as as, if there's anyone from Spain out there listening or watching, maybe you could let us know. How did the concept of Snow Bear originally come up? Um, you know, we wanted, the, the concept originally came up from Nick and I were talking about wanting to do an animated short. We knew we wanted to do something that we could get done by ourselves. So I wanted to do one character. I wanted to do a simple environment. I wanted it to be an animal. So we talked about it more and more. And I kept going back to, we, we kept going back to the Arctic and a polar bear. And, and you know, this idea of, of, of this lonely polar bear in the Arctic. Simple backgrounds, one character. And it's about loneliness. So he's going to be by himself. And so inherently it becomes emotional but we can also have some fun in the fact that he creates this snow bear um, and it just kind of grew it was just a seed of an idea and um, and at the time I had gone through some loneliness myself with you know some of the things I'd gone through in my, in my own life and so and we all have those types of those experiences and so I started tapping into some of those emotions that I felt and we started to write this this story and that's that's kind of how it evolved If you had five days to animate an acting dialogue shot, uh, e.g. Uh, 10 seconds, how would you allocate your days for your different stages? Uh, for example, uh, idea of brainstorming, planning, animating, like how would you organize yourself for those five days? Well, it's, it, for me, it's really, if I, if I understand the question the right way, um, it really comes down to it's going to take whatever it's going to take. If it's going to take five days, then that's great. But it's, you know, I always, I, I always take it one step at a time. The first step, and it's, I've done it enough that I can, depending on the shot, I can gauge how long it's going to take. But, um, but I'll always sit down and go, okay, today we're going to do this. This is our goal. And we, and we work towards achieving that goal. Let's say, you know, for Snow Bear, um, I don't know if I'm answering the question the right way, but um, for Snow Bear... We've set a certain goal for ourselves to get the story right. And we, we now have the story um, pretty well solid. Now we have to storyboard the whole thing. We've already done one pass on storyboarding almost all the way through. But now we're going to go back through and revise it and storyboard it again. Make sure that that story is nice and solid before we start to animate. Because I don't want to get down the road in animation. And all of a sudden we realize, you know what, this part of the story isn't working. And all of a sudden we've got it animated. I want to make sure that we've storyboarded enough that it's it's nice and solid by the time we get to animation. That's the mo that's probably one of the most important parts of the process. Then from there, it's just execution. 
Yeah, it does. Uh, Proko's uh, watching right now. And he's Proko! Asking, Proko! <laughs> he's asking what kind of bear is best. What kind of bear is best? Well, uh, whatever bear I'm drawing at the time. <laughs> No, but I, for me personally, I love polar bears and I love grizzly bears. But, I mean, obviously, you guys, I love all bears. But, um, what kind of bear is best? That's nice. That's like asking what kind, what, what one of your kids is your favorite. <laughs> Who's your favorite son? <laughs> um, and, uh, regarding the hidden Mickeys in movies, is that... Something the animators would sneak in, or I know it sounds silly. Do the animator, animator, the animators um, need to ask permission to do so? In regards to Brother Bear, I saw the hidden Nemo and was wondering if that was something you knew about. Uh, I uh, whose decision was that to put in the film? Well, first of all, no, we never asked the f permission to do that, especially when I wasn't directing and I was animating or a cleanup artist. We would just do it. That's the whole idea. It's supposed to be hidden. <laughs> so we'd always see if we could get it past the, you know, past the powers that be. Now, there's a lot of speculation that we were doing things that were dirty and, and off color. None of us ever did that. And, uh, and like the Lion King thing where the people are saying it says sex in the air, in the, in the dust. Well, it never really said sex up there. It was the, that department that does all the dust. That's special effects. And so the, they, they, they abbreviate by, by writing SFX. And so when you look at that dust, it's, that's the, the department that did it. So they were kind of tipping their hat to themselves. And so they put SFX, not SEX. And, uh, but some people took it the wrong way. And so when that happened, Disney did kind of make a crack down, took, crack down and said, look, no more, no more doing this stuff. But um, we still did. But, I mean, most of it was is harmless. Like, um, if you look at uh, if you look at Aladdin, there's a, and I've told this story a couple times, there's a scene in Aladdin where I animated Raja, and Raja gets turned into a kitten by Jafar at one point. And then in the end, when everybody's getting turned back, he turns back into a full-size tiger um, uh, and while the sultan is holding him. Well, when he turns back for, I think for two frames, he turns into Mickey. But it's Mickey with with uh, tiger stripes, so you know there, we we do stuff like that all the time. The direct the directors, a lot of times are hidden in the in the films. If you look at Mulan, the guys that are lighting off the fireworks in Mulan at the end uh, with the Shan Yu, uh, that's those are the directors Barry Barry Cook and and uh, Tony uh, Bancroft, and so those are caricatures of them. There's caricatures of. My co-director Bob Walker and myself and the funeral procession and Brother Bear. So, yeah, we're always hiding little things. Oh, in Rescuers Down Under, one of the first shots I ever animated was a whole like a crowd of like 100 and, 103, I think was the count, mice clapping. And uh, we put all the Muppets in there. <laughs> but at, in the end, it was, it, it was darkened and it was pushed out of focus, so you couldn't see it anyway. But Kermit and Miss Piggy and Fozzie and everybody was in there. <laughs> so it was fun. Uh, I was curious, how did you guys come up with animating the lion, pa the lion's paws to mimic human hands in The Lion King? Many of Scar's scenes did that. Yeah, well, if you look at a, if you look at a lion's paw, it is a human hand. Like a, it's, I mean, it's 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 like a hand like that. And so all you have to do is lengthen those those fingers. If you look at you know, and Proko could do this better than me, but here's a here's a human hand with the fingers coming down. Okay, I'm drawing this very quickly. By the way, uh, Nick uh, just posted Nick today. You forgot to mention about the uh, the hidden Nemo and Brother Bear view, and if you knew about that. Oh yeah, yeah, the 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 yes, I did know about it, and I thought it was really funny, and so we kept it. Um, so there's a there's a human hand. Let me. Uh, Actually, where is the hidden Nemo? I never really. It's when they're catching the salmon. They end up catching Nemo. But a but a a, tiger, a a lion's paw or a tiger's paw comes down, and they have a a thumb that basically comes down like this. 
and they're you know they've got the same tendons we have on our on our fingers. Do you think snow bear will have some impact on people to appreciate polar bears more and care about what climate change is doing to their natural habitat? Well, uh, if that happens, that would be great. Um, it's right now that's not the gist of the story. Although I think there will be a little bit. I mean, it's a very simple story, and so some of that will be able to be read into it. I think. But here's a here's a, a lion's paw coming down, and so. These are not, there's a knuckle here, here, here. And so you have, we have the ability to kind of, you know, if you want to have a, a have them point, there's a claw that comes out and there's a thumb. His thumb could be here. You know, they have that, that thumb right here. And if you're very easily, you know, you could keep that together and still have it feel like a paw. And so that's, you know, it's, it's, it's understanding the anatomy, going back to that question, and this is something I really harp on a lot. If you understand, if you do your research and understand the anatomy, you're going to start finding similarities, you know, between ourselves and, and the rest of the world the, through comparative anatomy, and um, and you can start to you can start to utilize that, and so that's that's where your research will take you. Is it true that at Disney they call the fur of animals fluffs and tufts? Uh, Tony Bancroft. Tell me this at a convention. Is it true? Well, there are fluffs and there's tufts. That's not what we call the fur. But there's areas where it'll fluff up. There's areas where you'll get tufts of fur. So um, we call it, there's also breaks in the fur. Uh, there's, yeah, I mean, that's, there's different things that we would call it. But, I mean, a fluff and a tuft are, are specific things. That's not what we called all of the fur. What was it like working with Phil Collins on Brother Bear? Oh, it was great. We worked together for four years, and um, and uh, and Phil was a absolute professional, and uh, he he uh, he had he works out of his home in Geneva, Switzerland, and so we set up a video conferencing system in his studio, and so whenever we needed to talk, because he'd be in his studio all the time working, um, we could just call him up on the video conferencing, and we could have video meetings and talk about lyrics. Uh, he was very, very, for as popular and as famous as Phil Collins is, he was extremely collaborative. And so he, if he came up with new lyrics for a, for a song, um, or if he had questions, uh, he would call either myself or Chuck Williams, our producer, at home. Um, one of my favorite stories is I was putting in some wood floors at my house one, one weekend, and my sister was there, and... Um, and she answered the phone, and it was Phil Collins calling to go over some song lyrics with me. And my sister is a huge Phil Collins fan, and she uh, she really flipped. It was pretty funny. I, I still remember her first side of the story. Like she, and she's like, Aaron, Aaron, he's Phil Collins. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Uh, is this a uh, uh, is this a male bear and with the same animation that's going on what would change uh if we were a female bear you know what for especially for polar bears and uh, the animation wouldn't really change that much it's really the design and i'm kind of i'm in my mind he's kind of a teenager he's probably like 18 19 20 years old in my mind if, if, an equivalent human age um if he was a you know if he was a bigger male uh it, it really comes down to the design. That's the that's really the big difference. He would be a much more bulky, big, hunking, hulky, uh, extremely heavy, muscular um, design. Whereas uh, if it was a female, full grown of age, uh, she'd be a little bit more slight of be, of build. And that's that's how they are in the wild. If you see if you see a big mature male polar bear compared to a a mature female, they're, um, the males are a third bigger. They're just giant. That's the largest carnivore walking the earth. The largest carnivore. They're just incredibly huge animals. And when you, uh, sorry, when you flip it, it looks like you're animating a bear twerk. A bear twerk? A bear twerk. <laughs> right, right there. Oh, here it is, right there. <laughs> What's your favorite part of being an animator? 
bringing life, creating life, doing drawings, doing multiple drawings and bringing them to life. That's what I love about animation. You know, uh, you, you look at this long enough and this bear isn't just a series of drawings. He's, in my mind, he's becoming real. And I'm just trying to get him onto the paper so that you can see what I see in my head and see this living creature that I have in my head. That's what I love about animation. You can bring life, you can put life on the paper just through a series of drawings. And uh, that to me is pretty magical. And that's what that's what hooked me in the in, in the very beginning. You know, when I first started learning animation, it was just the ability to to do that. And uh, that is just you know, it's it's like a drug. You just you can't get enough of it. So I'm going to have him coming up. Do you have any plans to go to the Annecy Animation Festival someday? I, yes, I do have plans going someday. Am I going this year? I don't know. I know my brother Travis is going. As a matter of fact, he's going uh, with TV Paint. So he's going to be there. But yeah, Nick and I definitely, we've been talking about it. We want to go, definitely want to go. And eventually, when we get this done, I'd like to take this to Annecy and maybe screen it, hopefully, if it's good enough. How but do, we got to get it done. Go ahead, Dustin. Sorry. Uh, how do life drawings help in uh, designing animation characters? Well, you can't, you can't, you can't caricature without knowing reality. You have to know reality before you can start abstracting from it and creating something new. Um, anybody that doesn't do their, you know, if you try to 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 design a bear, for instance, without understanding how real bears are built, you're going to end up something that, that just it looks wrong. You know, the whole idea between it with, with character design, at least from a Disney standpoint, from a Disney style of animation, is there's a certain level of, we don't want things to be real, we want them to be believable. And you can't hit believability without starting in the real world and then pulling away Kind of abstracting from what you know from reality so that's that's our goal go ahead dustin uh did you take classes from walt stanchfield at disney i did i took walt i took uh classes from walt stanchfield i took drawing classes on uh flower street in los angeles and in, in glendale and uh and he was an amazing really great guy uh is this going to be a silent film similar to paperman uh, it, well, it's not going to be silent, although there's not going to be dialogue. Um, but there, there, I mean, I guess Paper Man has sound effects and, and that sort of thing. And this will have all of that. Uh, but the, you know, you'll, the bear will make sounds, but they're going to be bear sounds. He's not going to, there's not going to be any talking and there'll be score and sound effects and wind and crunching snow and all of that. Uh, do you have any plans to go to any, uh, conventions on the East coast? Uh, not right now. I don't. Right now, our biggest um, there's our biggest goals for this year. Uh, I've, I'm going to Nashville uh, to speak at Lipscomb uh, University. I'm going there for Tom Bancroft, um, who's uh, another great animator. If you guys know Mushu from Mulan, uh, he was the supervising animator of Mushu, the creator. He and I worked together for years and years at Disney. He also animated Simba, um, but. Um, I'm going over to Nashville to, to do some workshops with his classes there. And then in March, I'm going to spend the entire month of March uh, touring China and doing some teaching all through China and Myanmar and Singapore. And then, uh, but after that, we're spending the whole rest of the year focusing on Snow Bear and trying to get it done. And uh, uh, that's our big drive for the rest of the year is, is, um, is just pushing, to, to, you know, we'd, we'd love to have it have it done by mid-November, although that's going to be tough. Uh, what advice do you have for animators and illustrators that uh, are struggling to find the balance between appeal, exaggeration, and solid drawing? It's <laughs> there. That's the thing. That that's the eternal struggle. That I mean, it, it's not just every animator. I have that struggle, and the only way you you defeat that struggle is to continue to work at it. Um, 
you know, the first ideas that I throw down aren't the aren't the finished designs that end up in the film. I, I it, it's it's it, a lot of it is trial and error. I try something to see if it works. I push features. I push designs to see you know until they break. Um, it's a lot of trial and error, and then over time you start to understand what does work and what doesn't, and so the process becomes I don't want to say easier. But there is a process that becomes a little bit less hard um, just through, you know, understanding that you know where you're going, I guess. I'm kind of drifting off as I try to draw. Sorry. <laughs> uh, before digital coloring, uh, how was uh, the moving characters normally colorized? Well, um, we did this on Roller Coaster Rabbit, the Roger Rabbit animated short that we created. Um, all of the characters were either back in the old, old days before they had Xerox, they were, um, the drawings were done on paper and then a piece of clear acetate was laid over the drawing and you had inkers that would go in and they would redraw on that acetate. They would trace the drawings with ink lines. And then on the back of the flip after that dries, they'd flip it over and they would paint on the back, the color. So that when you flipped it back over to the ink side, you'd have the ink line and then the color on the back side. And then they would lay that over the background and take a picture. So every drawing was rough animated, cleaned up, then redrawn with an ink line and then painted on the back of the acetate. And then it was photographed. So there's a, a big process. After that, they came out with Xerox. And so back in the 60s, if you look at... Um, you know, 101 Dalmatians and uh, 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 Jungle Book. The, uh, these are films that were um, were the kind of the first films to be Xerox onto. They kind of took the the ink person out of it, and they Xerox that drawing onto the clear acetate. So now you didn't have to ink it anymore. You could just Xerox it on, and then they flipped it over just like the old days, and they'd paint the back, and then you'd have it like that that way. And so that's that's what we did on. Uh, on roller coaster rabbit, and then once uh, the digital painting came along, then they didn't have to do that anymore. And that's usually why back back then, especially for um, the big animated features, it would take it would take years to to complete because it's not just oh yeah a single animator doing one particular scene. It's like multiple people going through that same scene. Oh yeah, doing this. and it's still that way to a certain degree, but um, but yeah, it's just the jobs have changed. It's more simplified in certain ways. Um, do you want to release a snow bear on DVD and Blu-ray? Well, it's only a seven minute. I don't know. If, I mean, we might, but right now it's, we're just focusing on getting it done. It's our own little personal project. If it gets to the point where, you know, that comes up and maybe, but it's like I said, it's only seven minutes. That's right now. So it doesn't really warrant cutting together a whole DVD for it. <laughs> so. so you can see he's coming around and jumping up in the air. Trying to smooth out that action. You can see there's big jumps through here. And so I'm trying to get a drawing in between each one of those. And you can see once I get that drawing in there, let me turn this onion skin off. It really smooths that action out. And he's turning away. And look how, see how that head is leading the way. Go ahead, Dustin. Uh, have you always um, drawn as direct as you do now, or did you uh, construct more in the beginning of your career, uh, like more big shapes and less details? Um, I did, uh, hold on, one sorry, one second here. One sorry? One second, sorry. <laughs> one sorry. I know, I'm getting one confused. One sorry, coming right up. <laughs> I am... Um, uh, no, I did a lot of construction in the beginning, and then I um, I just got I as I got more proficient, I decided to change that style, and um, and I the, the construction is still in my head. I just kind of jumped to the next stage, and I, I, I even with the onion skin, I, I kind of see the animation in my head. Um. Could you do a video about timing and animation, please? Yeah, sure. Timing timing's a funny funny thing to, to talk about because um, there are, anal, you know, kind of clinical, analytical 
approaches to some timing, but a lot of times timing is really subjective. It's really um, kind of if it looks good, it is good kind of thing. But there are some the, some tricks that I do uh, and some rules that I follow for timing that uh, I can definitely talk about. Uh, what is your opinion on the uh, stickman animations and fights on on YouTube? Oh, I think I think they're awesome. I love them. I think they're really funny. We used to do stuff like that. We would we'd goof around at, at Disney and do some funny stuff like that every once in a while. I think my personal favorites with the uh, stick men is when they're interacting um, with the uh, um, with the web browser. Like, oh yeah. Like Minecraft and every, and all that all that stuff. Uh huh. I think I'm gonna have these feet just start to come up. Uh, will you come to Malaysia and give a talk about inspiring young animators in some uh, university? Okay. Provide me the, the university and give me the venue and I'll come. I'd love to come to Malaysia. Uh, what is your favorite Pixar movie? My favorite Pixar movie? One of my favorites is Toy Story 3. I love Toy Story 3. I love how they, you know, they really pushed it. Up, Up is very dear to me. I love Up. I think the first 20 minutes of that movie is probably some of the most powerful animation that's ever been done. Um, yeah, I think those are my those are my favorites. Uh, where exactly will you be teaching in Myanmar and Singapore? Uh, you know what? I don't have I don't have them. Uh, I don't have the schools in front of me. I'm sorry. I can't remember exactly, um, but uh, it's with uh, uh, Nick. And, uh, it's with Dulwich. It's a Dulwich. Am I saying it the right way, Nick? The Dulwich uh, International Schools. Um, I'll have to look that up, and, and uh, we'll, we'll let you know. Uh, will you ever consider creating a video that shows uh, when and how to add lip syncing to an, to an animation? Yeah. Um, the when, okay, I mean, confirms, yes, of the pronunciation. yeah, so the, the, um, as far as the when, I mean, that's all, that's all dictated in the writing of, of, you know, of your script and the how I can definitely show you guys how I've got a lot of experience with dialogue. All right. Okay. So he's coming up. We got a nice big bare butt right here. Nice boot. Dust boot. <clears throat> I want to clean that up just a little bit. How long does it take to be good at animation? <laughs> uh, seven. <laughs> seven. Answer to everything. <laughs> well, I think the ultimate answer is 42. 42, that's right. Um, you know, it just takes a lot of practice. It, 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 everybody's different. Um, but you got to do it a lot, and um, it's there's a lot of work that goes into it. But it's it's also very satisfying. All right, so now I've got this butt coming up in the air. He's he's coming up and coming back down. So I got to, you know, sometimes people think that doing in betweens is just you know, you're just putting lines between lines and smoothing the action. But you can see, you know, I'm doing a drawing from here to there. Well, sorry, from there to there. That's not, that's a, that's a big change. So I got to figure out that, that change. And so what I do is I, I'll grab a piece at a time. Like I'll start with these feet. The feet are the closest to us. And you can see they're kind of moving up in an arc. So I want to make sure I follow that arc. It's going kind of that way. Uh, is there a hand-drawn animated movie with 60 frames per second animations? Or is everything, um, uh, done in 24 frames per second. Uh, if there, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if there's anything out there at 60 frames. Um, I would certainly hate to do something at 60 frames per second. <laughs> that's that's over twice the work. Uh, so I don't know. But um, I can't tell you. Uh, is there anything we should keep in mind when doing in betweens? Yes. Don't, don't in between lines, you're in betweening shapes. So that's what I'm talking about here. So here, for instance, I want the, this butt to be coming up. I know I've got this knee coming up. 
I'm looking at these feet. <clears throat> I'm not looking at I'm not looking at lines. I'm looking at shapes, and I'm and I'm watching them move through. I'm imagining them moving through space, and then I draw where I feel that next that missing drawing should go. So I flip back and forth, flip back and forth, and I'll just put little tick lines on where I feel each part needs to be. Right in here. Uh, considering you're one of the directors of Brother Bear, uh, who would you say was your <coughs> favorite character? Kenai. <clears throat> but no, I, I um. I love all the characters, obviously, because you know I was involved in the writing of the film too, and they all become very dear to you. But uh, one of my favorite characters, actually, uh, I love the moose. Both the moose were fun, but I, I'm thinking about it from a director's standpoint, where I, you know, I was recording the 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 actors as well, and so that was a big part of the pleasure that I had was working with these actors, and so working with Dave Thomas and Rick Moranis was great. And, but one of my favorite, and I always looked forward to working with him, was Grizz, who is voiced by Michael Clark Duncan. And Michael Clark Duncan, for those of you don't, that don't know who he is, he was the, he's the big guy in the Green Mile. I thought uh, the bear's name was uh, Tug. Oh, Tug, that's right. We called him Grizz in the early days of the film. It always stuck in my brain. Uh... Yeah, but yeah, that's Tug. But he was, he was always Grizz in my, in my brain. I love the photo uh, um that you have of you, you and Bob uh, being headlocked by, uh, yeah. by Clark My, Duncan. Yeah, he was, unfortunately he passed away a few years ago, but he was an amazing, uh, amazing talent because he would come in and he would, he would record the scene the way we wanted it, the way it was written. But then he, he was really great at ad-libbing, you know, coming up with, once he understood what the scene was about, He'd come up with stuff that was kind of in character, but in ways that we never anticipated, and so a lot of times his stuff would make it into the film that we didn't, the, you know, that wasn't written, and so that that's that's what you want in a voice actor that someone that understands the role. There we go, moving right up, boom, that understands the role and they can add to it. Every every step in the process of making a film should improve the step behind it. Okay, so every step down the line should improve the, the previous step, should improve upon the previous step. And um, that's always a big belief in, uh, that, that we had. And, uh, and that, was, that was one of the great things about Michael Clark is that he would, he would improve upon what was there. And, uh, and that was always a pleasure. And a lot of the guys did. Rick and Dave, you know, Rick Moranis and Dave Thomas did. Matter of fact, most of the stuff that ended up in the movie was them, it wasn't us. We would write the scene the way we felt it needed to be, and then they would record it, and then they would just, same thing with Michael Clark, they would kind of take the idea and then riff riff on it and play with it and, and ad-lib and come up with fantastic work. Whoops. Keep going to the wrong layer. There we go. How do you handle scenes with multiple characters? Well, scenes with multiple characters are... You handle it in a special way. A lot of times, each character is being animated by a different animator. And so the dominant character, that animator usually goes first. And then um, when another character kind of takes over, then that animator will come in and you just kind of, kind of ping pong it. You volley that scene back and forth between the two of you until it's done. But a lot of times, the animators will plan the shot together so that you know everything's coordinated the right way. So here I want that head coming up. You know, this once again like I was drawing last week, this is a this is an odd angle. So I want to make sure I get these angles right. Somebody commented about the about the moose is that my uncle uh, my uncle used to say that me and my twin brother were just like those mooses. Mooses. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta say those those two characters are probably my all all time favorites. Like no matter how many times I've watched that movie, they always make me laugh. Well, when I was a kid, I always watched. Uh, I was a big fan of SCTV, uh, which is kind of the Canadian equivalent of Saturday Night Live, and that's where Rick Rick Moranis and Dave Thomas 
created those characters of, of uh, Bob and Doug McKenzie. And so back in the 70s and early 80s, we just, we loved those characters. And they, they kind of spilled over into the U.S. And even me living, you know, growing up in Florida as a little kid, I knew those guys. And so when we started writing Brother Bear, we came up with the Moose characters just so that we could try to approach Rick Moranis and Dave Thomas to kind of pull those characters out of the closet and play them as Moose. And they loved it. They were, they were so, uh, they were just a pleasure. They, they were awesome. I really loved working with them. I loved hearing how how often you you guys in the sound booth were trying so hard not to laugh. Well, yeah, I mean, I used to sit because I would I would sit in the sound booth often with the actors and read against them. Now, obviously, I didn't have to read against them because they often were reading against each other. But if there was another character, I would usually take over that character for the recording session. And um, uh, but the problem was. I had I got kicked out. I had to stop going in there because they would come up with stuff that was so funny, and I would blow the take because I'd start laughing, and uh, I couldn't I couldn't help it. Hey, you need to get out of here. Yeah, so kind I, of got, rude to see me. I got kicked out of my own recording session. <laughs> That's awesome. But it was awesome. It was always fun. Uh, did you ever get to see Robin Williams uh, voice act in the booth? I never got to see him act in the booth. I did get to meet him, but I never got to see him act in the booth, unfortunately. He was a hell of a talent, that man. Uh, what are your opinions on Japanese uh, animation directors, such as Hayao Miyazaki and uh, Makoto? Uh, uh, I love him. I love him. I've been to Miyaz I've met Miyazaki. Uh, I, I went to Studio Ghibli um, back in 2004. 2000, late 2003, um, and uh, we got to sit down and, and talk to each other. This is when Brother Bear was opening in Japan and Asia, uh, the and the rest of Asia, and so um, you know we went and uh, toured his studio and and we got to talk and he's just it was great. I love their studio. It's 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 awesome. So I'm, I am a big fan. So we're getting there. You can see we're getting some nice, smooth action coming through. Uh, do you ever wish to be able to watch the films uh, from the audi audience's viewpoint? Or do you have the ability to watch them without being affected by your involvement in making in the making process? No, I have a very hard time taking my separating myself if, I've, if I was involved with the film. It's just, especially with animation, you have to understand, you know, Brother Bear... It took me six years. I was on the on the film longer than anybody. I was on it for six years. I started it in 1990, November of 1997, and we released it in October of 2000, or the beginning of November of 2003. And so you got to remember, every minute, every second, every everything that went into that film uh, is burned into my brain. So when I watch it, I just, all I can think about is everything that went into creating every one of those shots and um, and how many shots I want to change and improve upon and rewrite and all that kind of stuff. So it's like anything else. You finish a painting, you finish an illustration, and you'll always see stuff that you would like to have done different. And creating an animated movie is no different. Uh, did you ever work with the artist uh, Terrell Whittlatch? Yes, I love Terrell. Terrell and I are actually very good friends. And we hired Terrell um, the, I, when I first met her. Uh, we had hired her to come on to Brother Bear and help us with our, our bear anatomy and bear designs. So she came on and helped out a lot of the... She did anatomy uh, uh, pamphlets or uh, you know, uh, handouts for the other animators. And, um, uh, and just a, she did some beautiful designs for us. And so I've always... And then since then, you know, over the years, Terrell and I have become great friends, and uh, and I am a huge, huge fan of hers. And her knowledge of animal anatomy, it just, it, to me, it just, it blows my mind. And uh, and I get embarrassed when I get around her and to, to say that I actually teach animal drawing and animal anatomy because when, it, when compared to, uh, to Terrell, it's just, her, her work is just, I, 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 I can't get the words out. <laughs> She's amazing. Uh, did you always want to direct, or was it uh, something that came after a lot of years in the industry? 
it came after a lot of years in the industry. I never wanted to direct. It wasn't anything that I ever sought to do. Um, and it actually ended up falling on my lap. Uh, I was... I was really interested in Brother Bear. Uh, it wasn't called Brother Bear at the time. It was just called Bears. Um, and the idea of animating bears was really appealing to me. And so that's, I approached the heads of the studio with that in mind. I wanted to design characters or um, art direct or animate or just whatever. I just wanted to be involved with having fun with bears. And, uh, uh, and I kept persisting because... First of all, there was no one else attached to it. It was in development, but it was it was just sitting on the shelf. And so, after some persistence over time, the they um, they finally came to me and asked me if I was interested in maybe directing it. That's how that's how the whole thing got started. All right. Uh, which animation style do you prefer to watch? Old Disney, modern day three D animation. Old Disney. I prefer old, uh, really well done 2D animation. Just because you know, that's just that's my background. I love the artistry of it. I love. Don't get me wrong. I love 3D as well. I, I really do. And good 3D. You know, I forget. Good 3D. Good storytelling. It doesn't matter the medium. And um, uh, you know, you'll forget what medium. It, what the medium is, as long as the story is good. I'm just trying to get that face in there. There we go. Uh, but I really do love the artistry of, you know, if I, I can sit down and I could watch Pinocchio over and over and over. To me, P Pinocchio is one of those flawless, artistically flawless films. It's just an amazingly well animated, well painted, well designed, beautiful film. Uh, what's the difference between a shot and a scene? Well, it's funny. In animation, um, we would we would use we would a scene was a single. See, live action, a shot is a, a single shot, you know, and then several shots are are strung together. In animation, we always called a scene. A scene was the same as a shot. And so that was that single thing. And then a string of scenes were put together and that made a sequence. In live action, it's a series of shots and they're put together into a scene. So it's just, it just depends on the, who you're talking to. It, it's really what it comes down to. Because uh, a lot of times a scene and a shot are the same thing. It just depends on you know, where, you're, where you're talking about. And now that we've gotten so much live action and animation kind of mixed together, it started, to, in my mind, and my, my brain started making the transition, started going over to more of the live action uh, way of talking about it. So I, I tend to talk about shots um, rather than, a, and, and a series of shots make a scene. That's kind of, and I'll, I'll still slide back into my old animation ways sometimes. But that's kind of where my brain goes. And, um, when I was in the film industry for, for the 3D animation, um, we wouldn't even use the term scene. We would just go straight to sequence. Yeah. Um, like there would be yeah, sometimes, yeah, exactly. They're there mixed together. Shot, and then there would be the sequence, and each team was responsible for certain sequences. Exactly. So some of them are, you know, other times the whole, the whole nomenclature is all kind of mixed. Okay, so now we're getting that. He's kind of made that jump. Now uh, he's coming back up, looking at those shoulder blades coming up. Uh, what do you think of Maui's uh, tattoo in Moana uh, being hand-drawn animations? I loved it. Yeah, that's Eric Goldberg animation at its finest. That's really good. Eric, for those of you that don't know, that's the same guy that animated the genie in Aladdin that animated the, the tattoo. Really? Yeah, pretty cool stuff. I did not know that. Yes, Eric Goldberg. He's a genius. Uh, do you have any plans at all to visit Sweden and do any type of workshop or likely event? Hey, if you give me an excuse to go to Sweden, I'll be there. Right now, there's no one that's no, no one has contacted us to come to Sweden. Um, and right now, we're uh, like I said, we're really focused. But you know what? Sweden would be a fun, a really cool place to uh, to screen snow bear. I know Sweden has a few polar bears. Uh, 
Uh, what's your favorite scene that Glenn Keane worked on? Oh man, you know that's that's a tough one. I love everything that Glenn Keane does. I don't. I don't really don't. I don't know that I have a favorite. It's just every probably whatever the last scene he did is my <laughs> is my favorite until the next one. You know, I, I'm, I don't know how many of you have seen Deer Basketball, his latest thing that he did with Kobe Bryant, but it's just stunningly beautiful. The drawings are just, they're, they're, they're sculpted. They're beautiful. Uh, what did you think of uh, Star Wars The Last Jedi? And don't spoil it. I still haven't seen it yet. I still need to see it. <laughs> I liked it. Um, I'm not as huge of a, I know you guys are going to hate me for this. I, I, I love Star Wars, but I'm not as huge of a fan as, as a lot of people, and uh, but I I, uh, I really liked it. I enjoyed it. Um, for me, it's it's all the reasons you go to the movies. It's a and it's an it's an escape. It's a fantasy. It's it's a good time. It's all you know. It's it's all there. So I really enjoyed it. Uh, what do you think of the new Lion King movie being called being called a live action, even though it's made through CGI? Well, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh I um, I definitely am excited to see it. Uh, whether or not it's, you know, what they call it compared to what it is, I don't care. I just hope it's good, and I think it will be if it's Brett or Brett, <laughs> if it's John Favreau. Um, I think it's going to be great. There we go. And the head to turn. I actually had a question uh, towards me asking if um, <laughs> Dustin or whoever you are, <laughs> do you think of working in Disney? Um, no, I don't really think so. I don't really have the skill sets to work in to work in Disney in any way. How often do you still use traditional drawing materials, or do you do everything digitally now? Oh, I still, and I don't do everything digitally. I still sit and paint. I mean, my last, not my last painting, but I've, let's see, this is a, here's a, this is a painting I did last week in gouache. Uh, I, I did a video for it. It's on my YouTube channel. This little gouache painting. So I still go out and paint uh, traditionally and uh, draw traditionally. I still sit at my drawing board. I paint watercolor, acrylic, gouache, oil, charcoal. Um, I, st I mostly do uh, digital right now only because this is what's dominating my life, which is snow bear. But no, I, uh, I still do lots of, lots of traditional media. All right, let's have a look. At, I'm going to... Do this real quick. Let's just highlight a, the, all the chunk that's been completely in between so far. Let's see how that all looks. So now we'll get nice, smooth. Uh, now you can see how when he makes that turn at the end to jump, you can feel how smooth that becomes. And I want it to be kind of heavy and kind of slow and you know almost like he's jumping through mud. You know, he's this big, heavy character. Uh, what's your take on name dropping when it comes to networking and such in the industry? <laughs> name dropping? Uh, you know, no one really cares. Anybody that, if I don't know what you're trying to do by name dropping, if you're trying to impress somebody, it's it's not. <laughs> um, if, I don't know. I, name dropping name dropping doesn't do anything for you. It's it's the it's the work. You know, if you're if you're looking for work, then the work is going to speak. Now, if you have great work, plus you worked with so and so, then that helps. You know, that combination. Um, if you can get a recommendation by somebody uh, that's well known, then that helps as well. But just to stand there and talk about somebody name dropping, yeah, that's actually more obnoxious than anything else. People don't. People aren't impressed. They get turned off by it. Uh, why are you shading in the bear's legs? Uh, polar bear's feet tend to, tend to get a little darker. They tend to get a little dirtier as you go down, and so uh, and, and it just adds a little interest. It separates the feet from the rest of the line work, so um, that's why I started doing that. So when you see it animate, 
You see it animate. It just adds a little bit more interest to the to the drawings, you see. So we're getting there. Lots and lots of drawings. Lots of drawings. Yes. Uh, are you drawing with a mouse or a tablet? Oh, <laughs> there's no way you can do this with a mouse. No way. No, I'm, I've got a stylus right here. It's like a pencil. I'm drawing on a 27-inch uh, Cintiq. It's, uh, it's made by Wacom, W-A-C-O-M. Uh, and uh, it's a 27-inch pen display. Uh, it's 4K. The screen is 4K, so it's very, very detailed, um, and uh, and I can draw, you know, right on the screen. So there's no way I'd be able to do this with a mouse, not at all. Uh, have you ever been in Germany, or are you going there anytime soon? I have only passed through Germany. Um, I have no plans on going anytime soon. Although, once again, we're always open. I think our next big trip that we're going to do, uh, I think Nick and I are going to try to plan a trip to um, to Baffin Island, where we're setting where we're setting po uh, uh, snow bear. We want to get up there and uh, probably in May and uh, do some visual research. Baffin Island. Baffin. Baffin so, it's Island. the island I was just talking about when we were talking about what, what the uh, what the um, inspiration is for the backgrounds for snow bear gotcha. it's up near Greenland uh, that like a fun trip. yep it'll be awesome I notice they don't use timing charts do you think it's it, uh, it is necessary for beginners to learn it well timing charts are mainly used for people to 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 communicate the timing for the people following them up I don't have anyone following me up so I've got the timing in my head so I don't need timing charts but if I had someone following me up they don't have the timing in their head they don't know what's in my brain and so I have to do a timing chart in order to show them so for instance between these two drawings between like I'm doing this one here between this drawing and the next drawing I would do a chart like that and to indicate this drawing being halfway in between I would just do a line like that, and that indicates halfway. So, and timing charts can get much more complicated than that. But, um, but like I said, yeah, I don't. If I'm animating the whole shot myself, and there's no one following me up, I don't use timing charts because I know I already know what my timing is going to be. Uh, do you think a new animator could find a job just with a proficiency of 2D software like TV Paint? Well, what kind of animation are you looking for? If you're looking for 2D animation, sure. To me, t TV Paint is kind of the standard along with Toon Boom um, as far as doing 2D animation. Not too many people doing it on paper anymore. Uh, would you ever... Do a how to draw primates like monkeys, gorillas, and apes course. Yep, I plan on it. I just haven't been able to get to it. The next, the next how to draw animal uh, course I'm going to be doing is um, wolves, coyotes, foxes, dogs. That's going to be the next one. Do you do any sculpting in clay just for fun? You know what? I I get that question a lot. I I don't only because I just. I'm so caught up with everything else that I'm doing. I would love to. Um, the last time I sculpted was in college. Any plans to do tutorials for watercolor? Yep. I have. Uh, that's going to be my next traditional um, course is in watercolor. Well, I completely screwed the pooch on that. I got to get that eye working a little better. There we go. How did you make the commercial so good despite having the environments in real life? I think he's talking about the, um, yeah, the, the bear and the bear hair. And the hair. Um, well, the, the environments were actually built afterwards. 
we we already knew the layout basically for the animation so we just animated to that and then uh, there was a crew in london that was doing the backgrounds the sets and so they had everything already figured out so we just handed everything off to them and that it was their responsibility to take the animation and, and create the set but i already knew what the set was going to look like there we go we're getting there we got about another 15 minutes and then i'm going to have to call it because i'm uh after i'm done with this i'm actually heading to the airport and flying up to virginia so um we got about 15 minutes left, so if you guys got any more questions, let's go ahead and we'll do a big drive to the finish here. Uh, do you ever throw away your drawings, or do you hoard them all in your house? Uh, no, I throw my drawings away. I, that, one of the big keys to being an, uh, uh, an artist is, um, and I try to tell people this, is don't fall in love with your drawings. Um, there's, a, there's a million more that you've got right in here. And... Uh, but no, I, 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 I save my finished work, but you know, stuff that I'm not crazy about, I don't, I don't hold on to it. What is appeal animation? Appeal is, you know, if it's appealing, if it, if it makes you feel good, if it looks good, that's appeal. Does it have appeal? Does it look good? Uh, do you prefer Wacom or who? Wacom. The only company I've ever worked with as far as digital pen displays go is Wacom. I've been with them for 10 years. I've worked with them for 10 years and I won't, I won't change. They have an amazing product and, uh, and once I find something I like, I don't change it. Uh, do you have any small tips on keeping consistent proportions when you're animating? Yeah, my, my tips for keeping consistent proportions are um, start with simple shapes. You know, when I'm thinking about this bear, um, you know, his shapes are simple. He's, that's his body. And then from there, he's got feet, shoulders that come down into feet, and then he's got a back end that comes down like so. So there's your polar bear done in about 30 seconds. And so I think in those simple terms, and if I can think about those simple terms, I can redraw that over and over and over again, then I can just attach the details. And that's how I keep my volumes consistent. go uh, would you maybe one day do a course about acting for animation yes I actually plan on doing that that's a good question and I will be doing a course on acting for animation um, and once again acting for animation that's another thing that's really subjective uh, but there are there's there's techniques that you can do to make your animation from an acting standpoint better and um, and I can I'm, I plan on talking about some of that stuff the key to it is really honesty, being honest in what you're trying to portray. Now, there's there's specific acting techniques that you know even live uh, that live actors use, and even we as animators will use them. Um, but there's but even that it really does boil down to honesty. It's tapping into that that part of your psyche that feels what it is that you're trying to say through the acting. If it's sadness, you got to tap into that sadness that you felt in your life. If it's, and you know, in the case of Snow Bear, if it's loneliness, so you got to tap into that loneliness. Um, you know, there's a lot of different emotions: joy, anger, all of that. And if, if you're honest about it, if you're tapping into an emotion that you've had in the past, and you play it in the way that you've played it in the past then it'll come off it'll come off as believable and not just kind of made up not contrived because a lot of times people get so caught up in the animation the the act of moving a character 
that they'll forget why they're moving the character. They'll forget the, the whole idea and the emotion of what it is that they're trying to get across. And so the emotion won't come across at all. So it's really, it's more important to get that emotion across than to, than, than to move the drawings in the right way. The, that, that'll come afterwards. The drawings, once you understand that emotion, the drawings will move according to the way you need them to move because you already understand that emotion. When does something uh, stop being a simple shape? Um, well, I'm not sure. I mean, there, there's even even in this bear, you can still see and feel the simple shapes underneath all the details. So, you know, if you get if you get too much clutter going on, then yeah, I think it's going to stop being a simple shape. You want to still feel the structure underneath. You know, even all, with all this detail and movement, you can feel his his somewhat simple shape underneath all of this. There's a, there he is. I like the look of that. <coughs> Let's turn that background on again. See how that looks. Yeah, see, I'm digging that. And this is another lesson too. See how dark he is against that white? But then as soon as I turn on that darker background, all of a sudden he pops. So it's always good. I always check my values. I always check my color, my values against the mid-tone background because if you do it against white, it'll start looking too dark. But here I have it against the proper background. Now he pops off the background. So always, you know, if you're checking color, always check it against a neutral kind of mid-tone background. Just a little lesson for you. Uh, do you write or want to write in the future a book for 2D Animation 101? Um... I'm not sure that we'll write a book on it. We might take some of our courses that we've done uh, in the next couple of years and translate those into a book. Um, but as far as specifically sitting down to write a book, I probably won't be doing that. Um, that's just not, it's not in my, that's a huge endeavor. And I'd rather be making films than writing books. So that's kind of my philosophy on that. But um, we're getting there. Now what time we got? It's 2.23. I'm going to go ahead and, We'll go ahead and wrap it up. Um, let me get down here, turn this off again, so we can see that animation. I'm going to let that play a little bit. Actually, I'm going to let's increase the size. There we go. Let's look at it full size. So now you can start to see, you know, that rough pose test that we had last week. Now we're getting something that's starting to come together, and it's starting to get some fluidity. The life is coming together. The appeal is coming together. Um, once we get all those drawings in there, like I said, the next week we're going to be focusing on color, shadows, getting everything to sit. I've still got footprints to do in the sand, on the sand, in the snow. Um, I've got to get that the, the snow that's piling up, I've got to get that drawn in there a little bit better. So there's still a few things we need to do before we're done. But I think by the end of next week we'll have this done and uh, we'll be able to share it with everybody. But, um, but uh, anyway, so that's that's in betweening that's snow bear that's this is what we're doing we're going to be doing a lot more of this as we create snow bear over the next year it's been our goal to not just create our own short but we wanted to do it in a way especially through social media that you guys could kind of look over our shoulders and watch the entire process we want you to um to see what it takes to make an animated short and then at the end of it we're actually going to create an, an entire course on how to create your own animated short uh, the only thing we won't show you through the process uh, because I want it to be a surprise. I'm not going to show you all the story points because I want you to see um, when we actually screen it. I want you guys to see the story fresh. So um, and go, go ahead, Dustin. Uh, I've got one more question before we go. Um, mm -hmm. I want to ask if uh, company art recruiters really care about past work experience or do they only look at your portfolio? No, they they do. They are interested in past work experience, especially. Um, let's say you you worked at some place uh, and you got fired because you were late all the time or you got fired because you couldn't get along with somebody or maybe um, you your past work experience you did something really great and but that company fell on hard times and they had way they went under but you are a huge asset and you know there's there's your your past experience can say a lot to a future employee or employer and uh, so, yeah, that always, it always matters. Um, so that's another thing. So, you know, if you're in this industry, the animation industry, it's small. 
and your actions will, whether they're good or bad, will follow you. And um, I can't tell you how many people I've met over the years that they'll end up popping from studio to studio to studio because they just can't, they can't get a foot in anymore because they're difficult to work with. You can't be difficult to work with. You have to be a team player. You have to put the best foot forward. You've got to be professional. Um, all of those. And, and you, have, you have to be a good artist. And uh, all of that will be, uh, will, will add up to, you know, you having a, a decent career. But um, anyway, so the, here's Stow Bear. This is our first test shot. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying seeing it come together. Um, I'm certainly having fun drawing it. Um, uh, I'm leaving town, but I'll be back on Tuesday uh, over on Facebook. So you can catch me there at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and then I'll be back right here next week on Thursday. Um, actually, I might not be here Thursday because I have to go to Connecticut on Thursday. So um, check me out over on Tuesday over at Facebook. Uh, I think we're going to have to take a little hiatus unless we do something on Wednesday. I'm not sure yet. Uh, but we are we are flying up to Connecticut because we are recording a new storyboard course up there. So stay tuned for that. And uh, uh, anyway, get out there, do some drawing, do some animating. Uh, like I always say, put some beauty back into the world because you have the power to do it. You're an artist. And uh, until next week, uh, keep on drawing. Uh, keep on putting beauty back in the world. And I will talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. Oh, and go check out some more of the stuff that we've got over at my website, creatureartteacher.com. There's a whole bunch of lessons over there, animation, drawing, all kinds of stuff. So check it out, and I'll talk to you next week. Thanks. Bye.